Hello, welcome to Soothing Pods Sleep Story. My name is Chris, and I'm going to tell you a wonderful story that will lull you into a peaceful and restful sleep. The day is done, and you deserve to rest. Stretch and relax all your muscles. Let your body sink into the softness of your bed and feel all the tightness of the busy day unwind all around you. There are no more tasks to be completed. No more worries to be heard. And the only words you need to hear are those of an old and beloved fairy tale by the Brothers Grimm. Listen quietly to the story of a kind-hearted princess, a conniving maid, and how the truth was once hidden in a meadow full of geese. Long ago, a good-hearted queen lost her husband. Without the king, she had only her daughter to love and cherish. The princess was given every consideration while she grieved. And as she grew up, the tireless care continued. She had a warm, bright fire whenever she desired. Her dresses were newly sewn and meticulously embellished with priceless stones. And when she rode, the princess's mount was a beautiful white horse, so regal and fleet, it was rumored to be a gift from the clouds. So, the benevolent queen tried to balance out the loss of her husband and make certain happy years would still come to pass. The princess grew up buoyant and joyful, and there was only one counterweight to her high spirits. A lady's maid so sullen and bitter she could curdle milk from across the room. The maid's fingers were constantly smudged with soot, but none as black as the complaints she counted on them every minute of the day. She picked apart the seamstress's work with her needle-sharp critiques, and she always threatened to lash the poor stable boys. Whenever she thought she was given an old nag to ride, the maid spent all her energy resenting her young mistress, and she often hissed to herself how any fool could curtsy and nod all day. The maid even presumed to listen in at the doorways as the princess read aloud to the kind queen. She would overhear tales from neighboring kingdoms, heroic news from faraway wars, and new ideas from the world's great cities. But nothing moved the maid from her jealousy. She was stuck in her own corrosive thoughts. When the princess received an important letter, a mighty king from the north needed a wife for his eldest son, so that the crown prince could properly take on his role as ambassador, the king praised stories of the princess, most especially her poise and diplomacy, and he called upon an ancient partnership with her father in order to make the marriage complete. The princess nodded her assent and curtsied deeply to her mother. She then left the great hall to digest the news of her impending wedding alone, only to be hounded by her maid up the stairs. The maid muttered about the cold weather up north, 
and whined about its future effects. The bitter woman then sought to trip up her graceful mistress with bad assumptions about her new home and dire predictions for the long journey. She scowled at how the princess managed to keep her head held high. And then the horrid maid hissed under her breath about how princesses were nothing but shiny baubles to be worn by insipid men. Such words brought worried tears to the princess's eyes. But she, who had all the riches in the world, did not have the luxury to cry about her engagement. The princess understood. It was her duty to leave her home and dear mother, take up her life amongst strangers, and serve them as best she could. It was the queen alone who cried and she shed nothing but unselfish tears for her beloved daughter. The queen caught them in her favorite handkerchief and whispered a charm into the silk. Let my child be always as safe as she was in my arms. Then the queen folded into the handkerchief all the love and faith of her heart and she sealed the magic with a kiss. This special gift was given to the princess upon her departure, and the good-hearted queen reminded her to keep the handkerchief with her, always. The maid overheard the talk of protection, charms, and magic, but it only twisted her thoughts to harm. She mounted her old nag and followed her mistress with treacherous looks. They were not far into the journey when the maid openly scoffed at the princess's bright outlook. The princess pointed out vivid blue jays amongst the trees, but her maid dismissed them as dusty sparrows. On a high crest, The princess remarked how the trail ahead looked like a ribbon across the hills. The maid misheard her on purpose and pretended the princess had no more need for the ribbons that bedeckled her cloak. She plucked at them so greedily that she almost unhorsed the princess before her hand brushed the silken handkerchief. The maid snatched back her hand as if it had been burned, and she claimed their journey cursed. She refused to raise her eyes and acknowledge the beautiful surroundings for the rest of the ride. Undeterred, the princess marveled at how lovely the brook along the road sang to them. But the maid's only response was to call her a fool Shocked at the outburst, the princess stopped her white steed and swallowed hard. She then desired a cup of fresh, cool water and voiced her simple request, as was her habit. The maid refused, and the princess was forced to get down from her horse and fetch the water from the brook herself. As she leaned across the singing brook and dipped her golden cup into the water, the folded silken handkerchief slipped from its place at the princess's heart and fell into the fast-moving current. The princess was heartbroken and, returning to the road, confessed her loss to her beautiful white horse. The compassionate steed tried to carry the princess from her sadness, and he maneuvered for hours to keep her from the maid's conniving glances. The journey was tiresome, 
and it wasn't long before the princess asked again for a cup of fresh, cool water. The maid told her to get it herself, and watched the princess dismount with sharp eyes. Where was the princess's shock at such terrible treatment? Where was her sunny outlook now? It took only a minute for the maid to realize the changes in the princess all stemmed from the loss of her handkerchief. The magic was gone, and the princess was unprotected. The maid immediately demanded they switch places, and she stripped the princess of every fine article of clothing. She claimed with a sneer that no one would ever know the difference. Then she turned her back on her old nag and reached for the white steed's reins. The princess's horse bared his teeth at the maid's coarse manners and rough hands. He refused to be ridden by her, and as soon as the princess was safe on his back, the white horse galloped wildly ahead. If they could outrun the maid, then perhaps someone would believe his mistress. Despite her unwanted disguise, the horse knew surely the princess's goodness would shine through no matter what she was wearing. He careened across the fields and into the next kingdom with the princess clinging to his neck. And the white horse did not stop until a noble rider on a red steed raced up to save her. The prince grabbed his harness and pulled the white horse to a stop, catching the distraught maiden before she fell. But it was too late. The princess saw his handsome face and knew her heart was lost, along with all her hope. Before she could speak, her maid screamed from the top of the hill how she had been wronged by her servant and robbed of her fine mount. The maid kept screaming her full story as long as it took her sway-backed old nag to catch up to the couple on the road. The princess was too polite to interrupt and too smart to expect the truth to be heard underneath her maid's unceasing tirade, and the prince was left to blunder through the meeting by himself. He was puzzled, but almost certain the beauty on the white horse was not what she seemed. If only he could have a quiet moment to hear her speak, but the maid's loud assertions would not allow it, and the prince was forced to act on appearances only. The maid dismounted, adjusted her stolen finery, and slipped her arm into the crook of the prince's elbow. She gave him her sweetest smile as she scolded the white horse for being headstrong and good for nothing but glue. The princess almost cried out the truth in defense of her beautiful horse, but the maid's narrow glance told her the threat would be real if she did not keep quiet. To save her horse's life, the princess would have to work as a maid, or worse, as the imposter insisted. The prince did not know what to think about the white horse, but he was certain the young beauty was not suited to scullery work and suggested she go to the meadow to help tend the geese. With a heavy heart, she curtsied low and then watched as the prince walked away with her grasping maid hanging on his arm. The princess felt her heart squeeze for the poor man, 
as she realized the supportive ally he had hoped for would never be found. The maid's greed and coarseness came out with every word she said, and it was certain her petty judgments would start a war before the year's end, and the prince would suffer for her maid's deceit, and the banished princess wondered how she could help him from afar. If only he could come and tend the geese with her, The princess found such joy in her work that she wished she could share it. Unfortunately, the man she assisted was lazy, grubby, and aptly named Kurt. He saw less good in the world than the princess's lying maid, and spent every moment bestowing great importance on cheap amusements. Kurt preferred pockmarked dice to the blue sky and a handful of jingling change to a healthy flock of geese. But under the princess's gentle hand, the goslings flourished and the meadow was full of their happy honks. She delighted in the fuzzy downed dawdlers and they listened raptly to her soft-spoken voice. It was the geese that made her smile, even as the princess wore blisters on her hands. They cackled together at Kurt's laziness and strolled with the princess as she shadowed the formal gardens of the castle. From behind the tall hedges, she spied on the handsome prince. She admired his manners as he greeted countless visitors to the kingdom. She saw how he forced a cheerful smile when he introduced his fiancée, the imposter. The maid was dressed in the finest clothes, and yet her curtsy was clumsy, and her boredom was obvious. The real princess cringed behind the cypress bushes as her maid complained to the poor, confused prince. Luckily, the geese, eager to make their lovely caretaker smile, drowned out the imposter's insults with their loud honking before she caused a diplomatic disaster. The prince caught a glimpse of the beautiful goose girl as she fled across the meadow with her flock following on the wing. He wondered at her grace and secretly wished he could chase her himself across the soft green grass and stop for a moment's peace near the clear pond. Kurt was not as kind-hearted when he spotted his helper rushing across the field. Her straw bonnet had come loose and revealed the long flow of the princess's hair. It shone in the sun and lay so thick and generous that Kurt decided he should steal some. Silken thread like that would fetch a great price in the village and make him enough to gamble late into the night. If only he could get the gaggle of protective geese away from the girl, The greedy man followed the princess all that afternoon and finally found his opportunity after she had safely latched the geese in their cozy shed. From there, she walked along the high stone wall that led to the servants' quarters. Kurt crept up behind the princess and raised a rough pair of shears She saw his shadow reaching for her across the stone wall and immediately prayed for help. But who was to come? The western wind, fond of the princess for her soft singing voice and her daily words of gratitude, swept along the path 
and ripped Kurt's hat from his head. The greedy man was forced to drop the shears and chase his hat along until it landed in a murky puddle. Squeezing out his muddy hat, Kurt turned to catch up with the goose girl and stopped cold in his tracks. She hadn't gone through the arched servant's entrance, but stood instead at the edge of the dark woods where a stunning white horse had appeared. The princess was safe from Kurt, his rusty shears now in her pocket, though she still felt alone and unprotected, far from her loving mother. So, it was a great comfort when her white horse emerged from the shadows and came to speak with her. Her horse warned the princess of Kurt's continuing ill intentions and assured her soon the truth would be known. Her goodness was shining through no matter her station, and the princess would soon be recognized for herself. Kurt watched, still covetous of her silken hair, and was shocked to hear her conversation with the startling white horse. For such a regal creature to appear out of nowhere and speak to her, Kurt was sure she must be a witch. He went directly to the king to confess all that he had seen. The king twisted his moustache and tried to listen to Kurt's complaints but his mind was on other difficulties. His son's betrothed was a huge disappointment, and her blundering had just cost his kingdom a fertile trade route. He almost dismissed Kurt's strange story about the talking horse, but sat forward when the surly man mentioned how the wind had come to the goose girl's rescue. The wise king knew the western wind's favor was hard won, and anyone who could count on such a magical companion was worth knowing. He demanded the goose girl be brought to him. She arrived and curtsied so low, her silken hair brushed the floor of the throne room. The king saw why Kurt had so coveted her long tresses, and her beauty was undeniable. But it was her tears of concern that caught the king's attention, as he questioned her about the mysterious white horse, a rumor that had haunted his court for days. She cried on the beast's behalf, She spoke so eloquently of the white horse's loyal service and wished so kindly for it to be brought into the stables safely that the king began to suspect the goose girl was more than she seemed. The disguised princess blushed when the king asked her about the western wind and she feared she was saying too much. If her maid caught her talking, her white horse would be in danger, and the princess bit her tongue in despair. The king noticed her sudden silence and offered a gentle solution. Perhaps she would feel better if she told her story to the empty fireplace the ashes would never betray her. And after the fire was lit later that evening, all her words would be burned away unheard. She accepted the king's great kindness and was left alone in the great hall where she immediately knelt before the cold fireplace. How she longed to tell her tale, but did she dare? The princess looked around the vast room 
and calmed herself with the thought that no soul could be eavesdropping. She began to explain all her recent misfortunes to the stern end irons and felt better as she confessed her true identity to the unmoved cinders. It never occurred to the princess that the chimney heard her words as well. It sent her words up and up to find the eager ear of the king as he listened from his rooftop garden. Once the truth was heard, the king rushed down to the great hall and summoned his son. The prince was accompanied by the conniving maid in disguise, and she shrieked when she saw the true princess standing next to the king. The maid fled the kingdom on foot, as even her old nag refused to help the unkind woman. That very evening, the long-wished-for wedding took place, and the princess found her true place in the world. You can leave our dear princess there, assured of her happiness, and now turn to dreams of your own. Good night, and rest well.